especially welcome Sophie this morning, who celebrated our 87th birthday on Friday. And when I went to visit her, she said, our service of Holy Communion this morning is taken from the Book of Common Prayer, and it begins on page 67. Page 67. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom our hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Continuing on the bottom of page 69. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these our laws in our hearts to beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church. And so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing as minister she is, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all our subjects, duly considering his authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honor, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without the end. Amen. You will find the call for today printed in your bulletin. I invite you to join me in praying the college. O oh God, the strength of all them that put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers, and because to the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good without thee. Grant us the help of thy grace, that in the keeping of thy commandments we may please thee both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. <coughs> the first lesson this morning is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 4 to 15, and chapter 11, verse 14 and 15. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing dis displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you. 
For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice only. You shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands of commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and, cook, and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his countries or to his courtiers. He will take one tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his couriers. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and then renew this kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm, the point of Psalm this morning is Psalm 138, found on page 508 of the Common Book of Prayer. Please stand for the reading of the psalm. <coughs> I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, with my whole heart, even before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple, and praise thy name, because of thy loving kindness to truth. For thou hast magnified thy name, and thy word above all things. When I call upon thee, thou heardest me, and undoest my soul with much strength. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, for they have heard the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For thou, Lord, be high, yet have you respect unto the lowly, as for the proud, be the holy men of our Though I walk in the midst of trouble, yet shalt thou refresh me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand by the fury of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord shall comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning verse 13. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believe, and so I spoke, we also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. 
For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earth be tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Our graduate hymn is hymn number 727, hymn 727. against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then, indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. 
A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Continuing with the Apostles' Creed on page 71. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was inherited by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and at the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended in heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with the glory to judge both the women and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Gracious God, loving Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts will be now and always acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We hear a lot these days about the opposition that we as Christians face as we go about the Lord's work. As part of the family of God, a family of faith, we are all called to work for the extension of God's kingdom here on earth. We are all a part of the royal priesthood. Scripture tells us that. Being a part of that royal priesthood in a post-Christendom society, a society in which it seems that God is a far less of a priority in people's lives than God used to be, brings with it opposition from many directions. From some directions that we would least expect. Oftentimes we get opposition from our members of our own family and even from our close friends. They just don't understand us. In listening to the Gospels, we discover that it was no different for Jesus. In fact, the Gospels, such as the one that we just heard read, are very open in sharing the opposition that Jesus faced. The Gospels are not afraid to have Jesus himself report that he was accused of being a glutton, a wino, and in this lesson, of his family trying to restrain him when the people thought he was insane. The religious folks accused him of even worse by suggesting that he was actually in league with the prince of demons. 
After Jesus offers a convincing reproof of this charge, his mother and family arrive, and they try to have a word with him. When they cannot get to him because of the crowd, the word is passed to him that they are outside. You heard his reply a few minutes ago. His reply is to recant the idea of family in terms of relationship to God rather than in terms of blood. You often hear me refer to this family that we have here because we are all related in terms of our relationship to God. Jesus says, who is my mother and my brothers? And then he goes on to answer the very question that he asked. He says, whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. It is not that Jesus turns against his mother and family. His mother will follow him, and she will stand beneath the cross when he is crucified. He will entrust her care to his beloved disciple. His brother James will become the leader of the Jerusalem church and will be a faithful follower. Jesus not, does not despise his own family, but rather calls on his listeners to understand that as important as family is, our relationship to God defines to a much greater extent who we are. I'm going to repeat that. As important as family is, that's biological family, our relationship to God defines to a much greater extent who we are. There was a time in our culture when it was important to be identified as a member of the church. It was the respectable, acceptable thing to do. In fact, life revolved around the church, the body of Christ. It was at the center of the community in which people lived. While these times were recent enough that some of us can still remember them, things have changed drastically. We can lament this change. We can talk about how terrible it is. We can try and find all kinds of things to blame it on. Or we can take advantage of the situation. We live in a time when people no longer just show up in churches because it is the thing to do. People who attend church, like those of us who are here this morning, people who worship regularly, who are active in the life of the faith community, do so because they have a relationship with God. They have a desire to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and to be his disciple. They do what they do because they want to do it. You are here this morning and not somewhere else because you want to be here. You chose to be here, especially you young people. And I say that because there's very few of you in number today who make that choice, fewer of you. And it's nice to see Mitchell down there too this morning. Wonderful. Matthew, not Mitchell, Matthew. You know, there are people, we're living in a time and age when people today actually shop around for a church. You might say, you're crazy. You go to St. John's. I've heard people in St. John's tell me that when they moved to the city, they've gone from this church to that church to another church <coughs> to see where they fit in, where they feel most comfortable, and so on. There are people who have moved here that I know, and they've shared with me their experience of trying one church after another. That's not uncommon today. People feel there's a need to do that. And so we have to accept the fact that people today come to church because they want to be here. And that in itself is reason to rejoice, to be thankful for each other. That in itself is reason to celebrate we, right here in this congregation of St. Mary's, we may choose to talk about the fact that many of those who call themselves Anglicans are not a part of our faith community. They tell me there's about a thousand. 
rough figure. We can spend a lot of time discussing the reasons why they are not, or we can be thankful for those that are, and for the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. We can choose to be thankful that we come together regularly to worship, to praise God, to give thanks, to fellowship, to receive the bread of life. We can choose to take advantage of what is happening in our present day society by praying for those who are not a part of our faith community. Now just think about that for a minute. Ask yourself how much time you spend praying for someone that you know in this town that is of an Anakin background and are not a part of our faith community. I do that as part of my prayers. I pray for those that are out there that I know God will want to see inside of the building. We can choose to invite, invite them to join us and offer them not only the opportunity to belong to the family, but an opportunity to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Most importantly, we as part of the family, we can live our lives in such a way that others will want to share in what we experience as a mother, brother, and sister of Jesus. We as followers of Christ can take advantage of the situation in our culture by living lives that reflect the love of God Lives that are filled with true joy, peace, and contentment that comes from God alone. And Sophie, I have to confess, after I left your house on Friday, I thought, what peace, what contentment in an 87-year-old woman because she knows in her heart that all is well between her and her God. Wonderful, isn't it? We can reach out to others in love rather than criticism and or condemnation. We can live lives that reflect who we are by giving of our time, our talent, and our treasure to extend God's kingdom and to never give up, to remain faithful just as Jesus did. The easy part would be to give up on days when things are difficult and nothing seems to go right and there's no way of pleasing others, it's very easy to give up. But we must remember that even when Jesus was on his way to the cross in Jerusalem, he never gave up. He kept on going. He went there. He hung there for you and I. We can take advantage of what is happening in our culture today by not getting caught up in the negativity that often surrounds us. Negativity that finds its way into the church, the family of God. Negativity that can bring you down. I was so thrilled this week when people were talking about how poor the weather was when I heard so many people say, but my dear, we don't have to pick up the pieces of our houses because of a tornado. Or we don't have to run in fear because of an earthquake. That is wonderful to know that people are thinking that way. A bit of rain to fall, so what? The sun is shining now. You know, when we, you and I, get caught up in negativity, that makes Satan very happy because that gives Satan victory, believe me. We, you and I, as a mother, brother, and sister of Jesus, we need to stay positive and to be thankful for all the wonderful things that are happening in God's family and in the church. We can be thankful for all that's happening here. A living testimony right there just above us on the hill. We can do that by being focused and staying focused. Focused on God, on Jesus. My friends, there are many families in our neighborhood, in our town, in our province, and in our country, and all over the world, who need Jesus. And they need the church. And we need to reach out to them, to help them to know the joy 
of a relationship with God in Jesus Christ. You and I, we are about the work of inviting people to come and to do the will of God for their lives and for the world. We, the body of Christ the church, we have the way to a full and abundant life that offers meaning and hope to a world gone mad. Whatever goes on in this congregation, it ought to be for the purpose of helping us reach people for God. It ought to be about bringing people into a life-giving relationship with God through Jesus, no matter what opposition we face. If we do that, then we will know that we have truly become the mother, brother, and sister of Jesus. Amen.
for Christ's Holy Catholic Church. In the Tri-Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the parish of St. Mary the Virgin, Cornerbrook, Rector, the Reverend Karen Lawton. We also pray for the parish of Bjorn, the Rector, the Reverend Robert Peddle. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Myanmar, the former Burma, the Most Reverend Stephen Fan Mayant U, Archbishop of Myanmar and Bishop of Yangon. At home, we pray for our Bishop David and our Rector Daphne. Watch over them, Lord, and equip them day by day for the challenges each day will surely bring. Let us pray for peace on earth. O oh Lord and God, we pray for peace in Syria and an end to tyranny and terrorism where innocent lives are lost and innocence is sacrificed. We pray for peaceful development in economics and law and order in all the countries affected by the Arab Spring and for economic development and improvement in all the European countries so desperately uh, in economic strife. May the works of your hand be visible all over the earth, Lord. We pray for religious tolerance in all the world as we learn to respect the rights of others to believe and worship as they choose. And we pray for the unity of all Christian people. We pray for our missionaries at home and abroad, remembering particularly Dennis and Diane and their work in Pakistan. We pray for all who do your work, Lord, whether in their homes or on the world stage. Keep them all strong in faith, courage, and endurance. Help us all to love you and love our neighbor as you have commanded. We also pray this morning for all students who are or are about to be in the process of writing exams. We pray for clear minds and determination and may their work be rewarded with academic success. Almighty and ever-living God, who by the Holy Apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto the Divine Majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal, the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all that they do confess uh, thy holy name may agree in truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace, remembering especially the country of Nigeria. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer just justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. 
Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant, David, our bishop, and Daphne, our rector, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and, right, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people, Give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all of them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we especially remember this morning, Al, Lillian, Riley, Tyler, Jim, Reverend John, Reverend Tanya, Susie, Clayton, Mary, and Melita. We remember before thee, O Lord, all, the servants, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that, rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in this of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of his great mercy, and promise forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that, Je that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. <clears throat> Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very neat, 
right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Continuing on page 82. <coughs> Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once off, institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memorial of his precious death, until his coming in <coughs> Hear us, O merciful Father, we most only beseech thee, and grant that we receiving thee thy creatures of bread and wine, According to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in the sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most only beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion, may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Amen. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world,
we pray the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most certainly thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries. With the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounded duty of service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Please stand. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace with will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us, thou that takes away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. Thou that sits at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passes on earth and 91 and 791.